Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. It has been quite some time since I posted a video. So this year I'm hoping to get back to it and be more consistent at it. So I hope you guys will stick around. Last year I started two new cut flower garden areas and that just took a lot out of me. I didn't have any energy to make videos on top of raising my two little girls this year. I'm hoping that I'm gonna be a little bit better at it. So we are doing a seed haul today. And this year I ordered from three different companies, Baker Creek and my gardener and Johnny Seeds. Now I've ordered from Baker Creek and my gardener before, and I really like their seeds and I find that they usually have the best value. I also ordered from Johnny Seeds because I've heard a lot of great things about them. And I've grown some seeds that I haven't had much success with from Baker Creek and my gardener. I am no way, saying that their seeds are bad. I'm a new gardener. This is gonna be my fifth year, no, six year growing. I haven't been growing consistently for six years. Like I said, I have two little girls. They just recently turned six and three. So if you can imagine raising kids, being pregnant with kids. So I wasn't able to fully dedicate myself to it. So I'm still pretty inexperienced when it comes to that. So that is all to say that I wanted to try a different seed company out to see if I had better luck. And then also there were some seed varieties that I wanted to grow that these two didn't have, so, and Johnny had, so that's why I went with them. And if I didn't say this before, I am in Washington State, zone 8B. I'm about 40 minutes outside of Seattle. So we are going to start with the Baker Creek seeds first, just because I have most of my seeds from there. So the first three are tomatoes. And this year I wanted to narrow down how many different types of tomatoes I was growing. Last year I grew way too many. It was really hard to keep track of. So this year I wanted to do a slicing tomato a green tomato and a cherry tomato. And I had some cherry seed tomatoes from last year that I'm growing. So I didn't order that, but Baker Creek does give you a free seed packet and they gave me this one, which they also gave me last year. And I really like this one. It's a really small plant with really small, tiny tomatoes. And it was really prolific considering the size. The only thing is I grew this in my raised veggie bed last year. And because the plant is so small, it's a determinate variety. So you don't want to prune anything, but because the plant was so small and living in Washington, you know, it rains quite a bit. So a lot of the soil was splashed back onto the leaves and I could see some of the leaves had some type of like fungal disease. I'm not quite sure. The amount of tomatoes it could have put off may have been a Affected. I'm not really sure, but I was really happy with the, the number of tomatoes it's put out. This year, I'm gonna try and grow it in a container instead. I got the mortgage lifter as my slicing tomato. And I went with this one because I remember hearing somebody here on YouTube, they talked about growing this on how they really liked it. So I thought I'd give that a try. This one produces one pound pink fruit. And then I love eating fried green tomatoes. So I always try to do a green tomato variety. Last year, I did one called Aunt Ruby's. German green tomato, I think that's what it's called. So I wanted to try something else. Not that there was anything wrong with that one. I really liked it, but it was the only green variety that I had grown. So I wanted to give this one a try. Um, this one is called the Green Giant. It also produces one pound fruit. Next we have a pumpkin. I'm growing this one to make pumpkin pies and pumpkin purees. Last year I was able to grow pumpkins successfully for carving for the first time. This year I wanted to make sure I had some for preserving. The New England sugar pie squash comes in fruit sizes that are about four to five pounds. I think I grew some of this last year. I grew several different varieties, including this one, but I don't remember which was which. I didn't bother labeling them. I did get some pumpkins that were this size, but I did not do any cooking with it. I just used it for, for decoration. All right, next we have lemongrass and I grew lemongrass last year pretty, pretty successfully. So this year I am gonna start a little earlier. I'm also gonna be better about growing them separately. I think last year I just threw a bunch of seeds in like one little pile and then just let it grow. And so I don't think it had enough room to get big enough. This is a perennial. I did not save my lemongrass from last year, but this year I will, I will try to save it. So if you order X number of packets from Big Creek, they give you a free seed packet. Well, I guess I must have ordered enough for a second one. This one is the Landis Winter Lettuce. And I've never grown this before. I actually have quite a lot of lettuce seeds from last year. So I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get through this this year. I wanna go through my old seeds first. It says this seed is incredibly cold hardy. So this might be good for like a fall sowing. And it's one of their most frost resistant lettuce known and superb for winter harvest. So yes, I think I'll try this in fall. 
we have the Solyndra beet. I've grown beets before, but I've grown the like round, the traditional round beet and it was okay. I didn't have like a great harvest, but this year I wanted to give it another try. So I just picked this one just because I thought it would be better for like slicing with the elongated shape. So this one is a seed that you would sow three to four weeks before your last frost. My last frost is about mid-April. So I'm gonna have to remember to get this started before then. And it's really good for slicing, which I thought would be the case. Next we have the heavy hitter okra. And I've been attempting to grow okra now for I think the last four or five years and I really haven't had any success. I can get plants that are about one foot tall and maybe produce two to three pots and I'm watching all these gardeners here on YouTube and they're getting plants as tall as they are so you know five foot they're getting multiple pods off of it and I, I just haven't been able to do that. So I read online that this might be a better fit for me. Oh it says it's the most productive okra they have ever seen. So it says to soak these for 24 hours. I've never done that with the other okra seeds and I don't think the instructions called for that. So maybe that's why I'm not getting these big beautiful plants. And then you want to direct seed after your last spring frost. All right, next is the Craig's Grande Jalapeno Pepper. And I've grown this for the last two years. I've really enjoyed growing this. It has some nice flavor, a nice heat, not too mild, not too hot. These can be perennials and depending on what zone you live in, you just have to overwinter them. So you want to start these indoors in bright light about 8 to 12 weeks before your last frost day so I'm gonna have to start these pretty soon here and then this year I plan on overwintering these because if you can start off with a bigger pepper plant guaranteed to have a bigger harvest all right so I have another free seed packet I'm impressed um, I felt like I didn't order that many seed packets and I got three seed packets so that's pretty cool this one is a bok choy and it's called the head do tiny they look like pretty tiny plant so be interesting to see how big they get this is best planted in cool spring or fall conditions and so in place i'm gonna try and grow this one this year even though i have a whole bunch of bok choy seeds that i saved but i want to give this one a try all right next we have the japanese minnowaze daikon radish and i grew a daikon radish last year but i don't think it was this variety i was able to get one or two radishes i didn't know when it was ready i had a lot of nice green growth on the top and when i went to go pull a radish out it was always a little too small they look like a skinny carrot and so i would just leave it leave it until i thought it was big enough and then at some point it was too woody um so i was just a little confused on when i should pull these so i'm gonna have to do a little bit more research but it says to plant these in the late summer or harvest after the weather begins to cool the other one it was a different variety but i planted that one in early spring and i think i pulled it in summer so maybe that's why it was a little bit too woody um this one is an old japanese favorite giant white roots grow to 24 inches long sweet and very crisp delightful next we have the canter bean I've grown green beans purple beans and yellow beans in the past and I really enjoyed it. I just wanted to try a new variety. The last green bean that I grew, I think it was like a blue lake bush and then there was another one i can't remember what it was called the flavor was okay so i'm hoping that this one will be a little bit better so this one is a bush habit you want to direct seed this after the last frost and they do recommend soaking the seeds overnight i've never soaked my bean seeds so i'm gonna have to remember that this year i'm hoping to can some as well as eat some fresh we have another radish this one is the early scarlet globe and i've grown this variety before and i've really enjoyed it so i'm hoping to have the same success uh, you want to sow this in spring in several small successions for a continuous harvest. Next we have a Japanese cucumber. I'm not even going to attempt to say that, but I really enjoyed eating Japanese cucumbers um, this past year, so I wanted to grow my own. This will be the first time I'm growing a Japanese cucumber. It produces fruits that are about seven to eight inches long. This one is adapted to high temperature, which is great because I always find that my, my cucumbers go bitter um, before I really get to enjoy it and harvest it as soon as it's ready to harvest is already bitter so i felt like i had to harvest it when it was like it wasn't quite there just to avoid that bitterness so hopefully this doesn't have that bitterness issue this one is adapted to high temperature and humidity and also disease and powdery mildew resistance next we have the mexican sour gherkin also known as a cucamelon i've attempted to grow this for well, i think like three or four years now and every year i can get maybe like a handful like that it has like this already pickled cucumber taste which i love if i don't get this one this year to grow properly I think I might give up on it. So if you have any tips, 
put them down below. It needs abundant soil moisture. These afternoon shade is beneficial in the hottest summer weather. I think this might be where the issue is. I've always grown it in the area of my garden that gets great morning sun, great afternoon sun, and then by the hottest time of the day, which for us is like around three or four o'clock, that area is already shaded. So maybe this year I'm gonna grow it in like a full sun location and see if that helps. Next we have the lemon basil and the cardinal basil, and I'm growing these specifically for my cut flower bouquets. Supposedly they like put out really pretty bloom heads. It almost looks like a hydrangea. And this one, does it put out flower head? It doesn't say. I picked this one for the, the lemony smell. So in place in a long summer area, start indoors and set out after the last frost date of the spring. Next we have two zinnia varieties. This is a pink variety called the Mazurkia. Hopefully I'm saying that right. And this one is a clean lime blush. Last year I had a lot of beautiful success with zinnia seeds that I got from botanical interest. So these ones you want to direct so after the last spring fall requires full sun. I did grow my last zinnias in a full sun in the morning, shaded in the afternoon, and it did really well as well. And it says you can cut this frequently to remove any spent flowers for highest production, basically meaning it's a cut and coming in flower. So if you, the more you cut, the more it will put out blooms. Next we have two different types of celosia. I grew this one last year. It's really pretty, I really like it. Especially like this lime green color. I really like that one, but I like all the other colors as well. So I wanted to grow this one again this year. And this is the first time I'm growing this type. I've never grown it before. These you want to start indoors three to four weeks before transplanting them out after your last frost or you can sow them in place. So I'm going to be starting these indoors. Next we have two milkweed varieties. We have the ice ballet and the showy variety which I'm growing both for the first time. I attempted to grow milkweed for the first time last year. Did not have any success. On the back of the packet it does not tell you that these need to be refrigerated. It says that you can put these in the ground as soon as the soil outdoor has reached 55 degrees which I did last year and I didn't have any success so I wasn't sure what I went wrong so I went online did some additional research and milky seeds needs to be cold stratified which you can do by putting your seeds in the refrigerator for like two weeks so I did that and I was able to get some seedlings. So this year I am going to refrigerate these seeds. I hear these are good butterfly attractors. And so I love to get some butterflies in our garden. All right, next we have yarrow and we have the Colorado mix. And I've grown this for now for the second, no, second year, but third time. So last year I grew it for the first time, didn't have any success. And then I tried it again later and I had a little bit of success. So this year will be the third time I'm growing it, but for the second year. So this is a perennial and it prefers full sun. It can tolerate some shade and you want to surface sow these indoors eight to 12 weeks before your last spring frost. So I'm going to be starting this pretty soon here. Next we have Calendula. Also, I've heard some people call it Calendula. This one is the Pacific Beauty Mix and I've grown this now for two or three years and I really do love the flowers. They're really pretty. So I've just grown them in the garden. I haven't cut them for a bouquet. So this year I'm going to give it a try and see how well it does as a cut flower. So you want to sow these in place in fall or spring or start plants indoor and grow for several weeks, setting out after last frost. Next we have two different types of aster. We have this aster, what is called the Salmon Janina. And I've grown this before with no success. And then I have the Aster China, the Giant Perfection Mix. And I've also grown before and didn't have any success. And it says you can sow in place in spring or you can start indoors and grow for several weeks and then you can transplant it after your last frost. We have three different types of lace flower. We have lace blue, lace pink, and lace white. These do not make good cut flowers, but they're so pretty and they're so interesting to look at. I just wanted to give them a try. All right, assuming that they all have the same planting instructions. These are an annuals. You want to direct sow after the last frost. They do not do well as transplants because the roots will suffer if they are disturbed. You can succession sow these every three weeks from late spring to midsummer for continuous blooms. We have Lebanimus next, also known as Nigella, if I am correct. Tried to grow these last year, did not have any success. It was a different variety. So this year I'm going to try this mulberry rose. It's a really pretty color. It has like dark pink, maybe lavender or white. And you want to sow these in place in late 
fall or winter to early spring and mid spring. So these are a cool hardy annual. If I can get these to grow, I'm pretty sure I'll pick up some additional colors later this year. Next we have Cosmo. This one is called the Double Dutch Rose. And this is the first time I'm growing like a double variety. I've grown like the single petal varieties, like the seashell type. And those are pretty, a little annoying to cut, too flimsy for me. They might make great filler, but that's really about it. So I wanted something that's a little bit more bulky as far as the cosmos. I thought I'd give this a try. This one you want to sew in place in mid spring, removing spent bloom prolongs the blooming season. So this is a cut and come again flower, I believe. All right, next we have Gonfrena Globosa mix. And I've tried growing this before. I haven't had any success. And I think this is my third time in two years. So again, I tried it twice last year, didn't get anything. I'm trying it for a third time this year. So you want to sow the seeds one eighth to a quarter inch deep indoors six to eight weeks before for the last frost or direct sow after. Pre-soak the seeds for 28 to 40 hours. Okay, I don't think I've ever pre-soaked the seeds. All right, next we have Snapdragon and I grew Snapdragon for the first time last year. I grew a handful of different varieties and I had a really good success. So this year I wanted to give it a try again, but I wanted to try this one, the Orange Wonder, because this one looks really pretty. The ones I tried last year were mostly just single color. And this one has pinks, yellow, and oranges on it. So I thought that'd be really pretty. Snapdragon seeds are very tiny. Last year, I just did like a little sprinkle in each seed starting cell. This year, I'm gonna try and get two in each cell and hopefully I can get bigger bloom heads. These you wanna sow indoors eight to 12 weeks before your last frost date and this requires light to germinate so you just wanna surface sow it. Next we have two different stock varieties. This one is Venus Pink and this one is Venus Cherry. And last year I attempted to grow stock for the first time. I didn't have any success. It says you can transplant or direct sow these in place in early spring. The plants prefer full sun and well draining soils succession plan for continuous bloom. They're really pretty. I'm excited to grow these ones. Then we have this seed packet, which is Paper Moon Scabiosa. So I grew Scabiosa and I really enjoyed it. They're really pretty flowers. The ones I grew last year was like a dark red, pretty like lavender color. And I went to try this one just because I think I'm I have some seeds left over. Like I saved seeds from last year, if I remember correctly. So I wanted a different color. This one doesn't have any instruction on it. So I'm gonna look back online and see what it says to do. If not, I'm just gonna go off my old seed packet. And the last one from Baker Creek is this Dreadlocks Amarath. I grew Amarath for the first time last year. I was able to grow, I can't remember which one it was. It was a red variety. It was either Love Lies Bleeding or I think I had another red variety, but it was really pretty. And so I have, I think I still have some seeds left over from that one. So I wanted to try a different variety. This one, it's pretty different. The other one I grew last year was like this nice big plume. This one has like little balls flower throughout. So that's pretty interesting. Uh, you wanna surface sow these directly in the garden after the danger of frost. Requires full sun, tolerates heat and drought, but does best with average moisture and fertility. Next, we're gonna do the Am I Gardener seeds. And this is the packet I saw on the very top. And I was like, what is this? And it turns out, and my gardener is also doing free seed packets with the order, which is new for them this year. They haven't done it in the past. So this one is a salad bowl mix. So you wanna transplant or direct sow these into the garden after your last frost date. Succession, so every two to four weeks to stay in harvest. All right, next we have the Jack O'Lantern pumpkin. And I think I, <laughs> I ordered this by mistake. Last year, I grew a bunch of pumpkins and I have a lot of seeds left over. And for some reason, I thought I need another Jack O'Lantern seed, but I think I have like two packs left from last year. So probably shouldn't have ordered this. So you wanna start these indoors two to three weeks before your last frost date, or you can direct so after your last frost. Next we have rosemary. I just wanted to have a perennial bed of herbs and rosemary as I remember, should be a perennial. You wanna start these indoors 12, 10 to 12 weeks before your last frost date, or you can direct sow it after your last frost. Uh, we have another Solosia. This is the pompous plume. And I've attempted to grow this now, I think for like the third or fourth time, and I haven't had really any success. You wanna sow these six to eight weeks before your last frost. You wanna seed it an eighth inch deep, and it does best in hot, dry conditions. So yeah, full sun. Next we have Carnation. We have a white Jean Dionis and a light pink, I believe, LaFrance. And I've attempted to grow both of these in the last 
two years. If I don't have any success this year with this one, I'm giving up on it. I'm just gonna go to a different seed company, try their version of it and see how that does. But this one, again, it says to start indoors six to eight weeks before your last frost date. You wanna seed it an eighth inch deep. All right, we have another calendula. This one is the pink surprise, even though it looks yellow on the packaging. Hmm, interesting. Did I grow this one last year? I don't think I did. Again, you wanna start these six to eight weeks before your last frost date. This one, you wanna seed in quarter inch deep. Next, we have Bells of Ireland. And again, I attempted to grow this last year twice with no success. So I'm gonna give it one more try. Um, these ones, I believe you can, you have to cold stratify. So they're gonna go in the fridge for at least two weeks. This says two to four weeks. If I can stretch it to the four weeks, I will. You wanna start these six to eight weeks before your last frost. You can direct sow this after your last frost when your soil is 50 degrees. I think I need to get a soil thermometer. And then you wanna seed these in 1 16th of an inch deep. So very, very lightly covered. Next we have two packets of this ornamental wheat black tip. And I grew this one last year with partial success. I was able to get maybe like five or six plants and they came out beautifully. And I thought to myself, you know what? Instead of cutting these, I'm just gonna let these go to seed so that I can have more seed for next year. Well, unfortunately it didn't get to that point because something came and ate it down. I always get bunnies in my yard, so I'm pretty sure it was bunnies. They're really pretty. You should really look into growing this one. You wanna start these indoors four weeks before your last frost date. And I did plant it in full sun location last year. So I'm gonna do the same this year. Next we have the Green Globe Artichoke and I've grown this many times over the years and I have really good success. I've yet to harvest it for the artichoke to eat. The flowers are so pretty. If you've never seen an artichoke flower before, it's unusual it's like out of this world in my opinion so I always end up leaving it because I want to enjoy the flowers so this year I want to grow more so that I can have some specifically for growing flowers and some specifically for harvesting so this one I'm going to grow for harvesting these are a perennial in zone 8b and these have come back for me year after year they will completely die down if it's cold enough but they they've always come back you want to start these 8 to 12 weeks before your last frost day you want to space these out pretty wide they will get pretty big I put them a little bit close which wasn't a big deal but I'm gonna put them out a little bit farther so they can get a little bit bigger. Next we have this common English thyme and the Italian oregano and again like the rosemary these are going into my perennial herb garden so I just wanted to make sure I have a little bit of everything. For the time, you wanna start eight to 10 weeks before your last frost, or you can direct sow after your last frost. The oregano, you wanna start four weeks before your last frost, or you direct sow after your last frost. Next is the Johnny Seeds, and if you don't know, they don't have any pictures on them. What they do have is a lot of information that you need to start, grow, and harvest your seeds. And that's what I'm really interested in because a lot of these seeds that I picked out from Johnny's are ones that I've attempted to grow before but haven't had success. Amaranth. Um, this one is the Coral Fountain. And last year I was able to grow one variety out of like the three or four that I had. So I was really interested in buying it from Johnny's. Um, I won't go through all of it, but basically it's very detailed and I'm hoping that will help me. Next we have Status. This one is the pastel mix. I attempted to grow this one last year, no success whatsoever. Um, I also noticed what's interesting that I didn't mention before that in the front they have this little sticker. It tells you the germination percentage and this one is 81% which I feel like is kind of low. I thought they had to have like at least 90 and above, but I could be wrong. Uh, status, it is recommended that is transplanted and you wanna grow these for at least five to six weeks indoors before taking them outside after the, the danger of frost has passed. This is the silver dollar eucalyptus. And I've been trying to get my hands on eucalyptus seeds for the last three, four years and I've had no success. And I learned that all the eucalyptus seeds, they pretty much come from Australia and they are wild grown. And because Australia had that huge wildfire three or four years ago, they weren't able to harvest seeds. I believe they are a perennial in zone 8B. I think I'm gonna be growing this as a house plant. So I have some seeds outdoor um, to cut and harvest from, but I'm gonna have some as a house plant. All right, so it says transplanting is recommended and you wanna start these indoors 10 to 12 weeks before your last frost date. Next is this hybrid mini broccoli melody F1. This is my first time 
growing a hybrid. If I remember correctly from what I read online, I think it's a cross between like a Chinese broccoli and American broccoli. I love broccolini and so I'm hoping this will kind of give me that taste. Again, lots of great information on the back. I'm not gonna go through it because there is a lot there. Oh, we have another stock. This one is the Aaron Pastel Mix. Ooh, this is a fun one. This is an ornamental grass. This one is the Frostic Explosion. And I thought this would just be really pretty in a cut flower bouquet. Uh, you wanna transplant these. You wanna start five to six weeks before your last frost. All right, this one is the Sunball Crispedia. Thought it'd be really fun to grow and add to a cut flower bouquet. This is a tender perennial in zones eight to 11. Again, transplanting is recommended six to eight weeks before your last frost. All right, next we have white dill. I don't know if you can use this as regular like cooking dill. I'm pretty sure you can, but I bought this specifically for the cut flower garden. So Sorry, I'm like way in here in the corner. I need to come down here. This is also known as false queens and lace. I was able to grow dill successfully last year. I, I started like a handful of seeds and I was able to get like two or three plants. So that's, that's promising that this will grow for me. Next we have the green gold blue perm, which again is also for my cut flower bouquets. Um, germination rate is 66%. Wow, that's quite low. A lot of these are quite low. Out of the alls that we went through so far, I think only two have been like 90 and above. Maybe I should have bought like another seed packet because there's not a lot of seeds in here. It says 100 seeds, but it doesn't feel like 100 seeds. So this is excellent for cut or dry flowers. It is recommended that you direct seed these and you can direct seed these as soon as the soils can be worked. All right, the next two are pro cut sunflowers. I have white knight and then the peach F1. If you ever notice that the, the pollen in the center of the sunflower, um, if you cut it for a bouquet, it pretty much ends up all over your table which you don't want happening, it could potentially stain your, your counter. So these are pollenless. And then once you cut them, that's it. They don't branch out. So you only get one cut per plant. Next we have the Zan Marzana 2 tomato. And I wanted this specifically so that I can can tomatoes. So my goal is to grow all 25 seeds so I can have a great harvest for canning. All right, so the last four are all onion varieties for the most part. Um, this one is a hybrid shallot, and if you don't know what a shallot is, it basically has like this mild flavor between an onion and a garlic, and we use it a lot in like Southeast Asian cooking. So I wanted to grow my own. We have red onions. This one is a hybrid as well. Last year I grew, I think it was called Ruby Red. I had a lot of great success. The red one is called a Barolo, and then the shallot is the Ambition. All right, so this is the Walla Walla Sweet. So here in Washington, we are known for our Walla Walla onions. So I just wanted to grow my own. So this should do very well in my area. And I also love to grow a bunching onion variety. And I've done like Evergreen, a Tokyo Long, and this one is the White Sphere. So this is the first time I'm growing this as well. All right, you guys, that is it for this seed haul. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully I kind of gave you a glimpse into what my growing season was like last year and my hopes and dreams for this year's garden. I hope you guys will follow along as I grow all of these out. I would love to have you. So make sure you guys hit the subscribe button just to see how these all come true fruition and I will see you guys next time. Bye!